Hey everybody, Frank here, Godzilla Island for the Mazer Squad with a little review slash overview of Volume 1 for Go Go Loser Ranger by Negi Haruba. Uh, now this this uh, manga has been out, uh, I would say, a little over a year now. We're up to six volumes have been released here in the States. Um, this has been a, this manga has immediately picked up some really big successes it's uh almost like it's not story-wise not like Hydro number eight but as popularity wise it's uh it just came out of burst onto the scene and uh it's been picked up for an anime almost immediately uh so far the first issue is a the first volume is a a lot of setup for what the story is going to be. Uh, in this series, we follow a henchman of the villains who goes by the name D, because uh, there's henchman A through Z, and he's D. Um, in the series, he doesn't go by that name, though. Uh, I'll get into that in a little. But basically, 13 years ago, some evil villains came to Earth with a big floating fortress over the city of Amanogawa, the Amanogawa city in uh, Japan, I believe. They don't really designate a country, but we're gonna go with Japan since it's manga. And uh, basically the, hor the fortress has been there for 13 years. And the thing is that the main villains were defeated within the first year by the Dragon Keepers, also known as Rangers for this series. Uh, Pretty cool story. What happens next is the keepers come to an agreement with the henchmen or dusters or fighters as they're called here. And basically what they need to do is every Sunday they got to come down from their fortress to almost like a coliseum like place. They come in and then they give a new villain every week that's going to invade Earth. Uh, it's pretty funny because it's, like I said, it's set up almost like a costume. People come every Sunday to see it. But it's to the point where, like, you're like, how do you not realize this is all just a stage act? But to the world, it's, it's a big deal to see the Keepers every week defeating these villains. And basically the henchmen... As we see in the story here is they basically debate, oh, what are we going to give them this week? Oh, we did that already. Uh, pretty cool art here. This is what the henchmen look like here through the, the manga. And basically we get a whole, the first chapter is basically the henchmen trying to debate what kind of monster to send down. And the henchmen turn into the monster. And all of them have a specialty. The monster they decide on is a uh, lion, a tiger-like monster that they send down but everybody's got their own special abilities uh d's talking to one of his buddies basically saying you know aren't you tired of doing this every week why can't we win for once he mentions there was a kid at the previous fight that was kind of chanting for the henchmen saying come on fighter you could do it and uh one other henchmen's like listen this is the deal that we struck with the keepers we get to hang around and not be killed as long as we keep keep it up. So they go down, they have the fight. Uh, D goes down there even though he wasn't supposed to and he's the last one standing and the keepers kind of kick him out. He gets launched into the sky and usually once all the henchmen are defeated they kind of reappear back in the fortress. He doesn't. He, he with his abilities to transform, as I said, all these henchmen, they transform into the monsters. So realistically, every week, these keepers are fighting the henchmen, not just the, just the real villain. It's just a henchman. So he decides, you know what? I'm done with this. So he turns into a human. He disguises himself as a human rather than a monster, and he's trying to infiltrate the keepers and become one of them. And during this process, he encounters a uh, two recruiters at the studio, Hibiki and Yumiko. Uh, the first person he encounters after this whole debacle with turning into a human 
is Yumiko, and she's kind of on to him already. You could sort of tell it reading this, but he's not aware of it at all. So he goes along with her. He does his training. Yumiko's all excited too. He, he's like you, you, um, Hibiki's all excited. He's like, oh man, I finally recruited one. And he goes through the whole training and everything, and begins to infiltrate the keepers. He wants to become a ranger. So he goes out to lunch with Yumiko and Hibiki, and Yumiko's like, oh, I have something to deliver to the Red Keeper. Do you want to come with me? So Hibiki's like, uh, D's like, oh, this is my chance. I could, on my first day out, I get to a shot at taking down the Red Keeper. So they go to the base, and the the Keeper is not there, but there's a whole crew there, and one of the Keeper's main third captain or whatever is there and he's kind of giving him crap and he's like well we got a message and he's like well the keeper's not here you he give me the message so he give they give him the message they leave but the way uh hibiki not hibiki i don't know why d was acting up was uh not going too well and he disguised himself as hibiki to tag along with yumiko so they leave the place and Yumiko decides let's go get some food and she begins talking to D about taking down the the keepers and D's like what? and then she cuts his head off because she's known the whole time that he's a henchman and then they keep talking and he's like, listen, knock it off. Let me finish talking. So she's like, basically, you're going to help me take down the keepers. And he kind of is getting frustrated. He's like, he wants nothing to do with the humans and at all. He just wants to conquer. He hates the humans because he is a henchman. That's what he was born to do is defeat the humans. So they get interrupted by Hibiki, who's overhearing this. He pulls... Dion and says, hey, there's been a uh, attack. There's an alien in the city, but you gotta go check it out. So Yumiko stays in there. D goes with him. And then Hibiki calls out D, knowing that he's a henchman because he's overheard this conversation now. So Hibiki's like, listen, I want to take down the Keepers too. And D's like, what the hell? I met the two humans that I met both want to take down the Keepers. The thing is, Yumiko wants to actually take them out and destroy them. She wants to completely take over. Whereas Hibiki, she he wants to kind of reform the Rangers because he knows it's a little corrupt. The shows are fake. He's like, I want it to be something better. I want it to better humanity. He wants he wants coexistence with the henchmen, the fighters, dusters, whatever you want to call them. And he's like, I hate you. He's like, I hate you humans. I don't want this. So he kind of goes off, but then Fighter F appears in the city and actually begins attacking the Red Keep. And the Red Keeper shows up and he uses these artifacts. Now, one of the main goals that Yumiko has here is she wants to collect these artifact weapons that each Keeper has. This is what allows them to transform. Now, at the shows on Sundays, they use the fake versions of their artifacts. They don't use the real ones. The fake versions where all the power lies, and the real ones... I mean, the real ones are where all the power lies. And the real ones are also what allows the Dragon Keepers to actually kill the henchmen. So, F... Fighter F appears, and he actually gets killed with a real artifact. So, he's done. He's off the map. Which is uh, which is unfortunate. So now we're down A through E and G through Z now. It's all that's left of the henchman. So the Duster, D lost one of his fellow comrades. So D gets even more angry. And Yumiko's like, listen. She's like, I really want to take him down. You're going to help me. And I know just how to get the artifact. He's like, She's like, this is what's going to take him down and kill him if you, you want. So... Basically, 
at the Sunday fight, Yumiko's like, listen, they're going to be at the Sunday fight. That's the only time their artifacts are ever un unattended. D decides to infiltrate the Red Keeper's uh, storage area for the artifact and get the artifact. And one of the, the third captains there again, and they begin fighting. And D pulls out a grenade. He's like, listen, I'll blow us both up. He's like... He's like, it's going to hurt me. I won't die. He's like, but you will. He's like, I'm just going to end up back in the fortress. And I'll be right back down here. So then the Red Keeper shows up. And him and Deke face off. And it, it's kind of weird. Because the ending's like so abrupt. And you don't actually see. I'm going to show you guys here. You don't actually see what happens. It looks like. D gets defeated by the artifact. And there's a whole explosion and everything. The artifact's there hanging on the side of the building. And he goes over to grab the artifact and it burst. And I believe it's one of D's illusions. And we see over here that Yumiko now has the artifact. But we see here Dee's hanging off the building with his arm missing. So he turned the sword, the artifact, he made an illusion with his arm to make a fake version to steal the real one. So the way Yumiko is talking here at the end, she talks like he's dead, almost. Thank you for your sacrifice, it will not be in vain. Four keepers left. So the Red Keeper is dead. So I am not sure exactly what happens in these panels here. Like, it goes so quick and it's like, I feel like you don't get to see exactly what happens. So I don't know if the D has disguised himself as the Red Keeper now and somehow killed him there on scene that we just haven't seen it. Uh, I really want to read volume two. Uh, the, the one complaint I'm going to have about this here is like I've just given you an example there. Is there's a lot of a lot of dialogue in this. Tons. There's not so much action in the first. But when there is action, I, I feel like we're missing parts of it. Like it's not shown enough. Now this is a first issue. They might clean it up. Uh... Kai, the Kaiju number eight uh, manga, its its first volume is very different from the other volumes, in my opinion. There's censoring in it, there's more entrails and whatnot. Uh, we got to see where this goes. It's obviously been a success, so I'm really looking forward to reading the next few volumes. Volume 7, I believe, is out October 24th, which is this month. I'm not sure when this video review is coming up, when this video is going to be on our page, but October 24th, and then Volume 8 is to follow in December, I believe. So keep an eye out for those if uh, you're already into this series, but uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed my little overview of this. I'm really looking forward to the anime and seeing how else this goes because I feel like the story is really cool. It's a different concept. It's not your typical Sentai. It's from the perspective of the villain. So let's check it out and see how it goes. Thank you.